hours from now, the Indian Space Research Organization is going to attempt one of its most challenging space endeavors, a successful soft landing on the moon. India returns to the moon after almost four years. In, la in 2019, everything had gone fine until the last moment when the lander was just about two kilometers from the lunar surface, but it lost contact with the ground station and it crash landed on the lunar surface. This time, however, ISRO has come out with a, a series of ground test simulations and that is why it is extremely confident that no matter what happens, the lander of Chandrayaan-3 will successfully land on the moon. Only three countries in the world have achieved this feat so far. The Soviet Union, which was the first country in the world, followed by the United States of America, and China. Japan and Israel also attempted it but could not succeed. So why is a moon landing so difficult and what is going to be the most challenging aspect when the power descent begins at about 5.45 p.m. this evening? So currently the lander module is circling the moon in an elliptical orbit which is about 100 to 25 kilometers. Now it precisely at the point where it's, it's going to be the shortest distance from the lunar surface which is exactly 25 kilometers ISRO is going to start the power descent now the most crucial part of this mission is that the horizontal movement will have to be changed to a vertical movement the lander module would begin moving horizontally at about 5 45 p.m. and then it's going to uh, uh, switch to a vertical movement now ISRO chairman uh, Mr. S. Somnath has uh, conveyed that this is the most challenging part of the uh, mission and precise mathematical calculations have to be done and uh, this entire process is going to be entirely automated and the command would be given hours before it actually begins at 5.45 p.m. The speed of this lander at an altitude of about 25 kilometers is going to be 1.68 kilometer per second and will be gradually lowered down. Now compared to Chandrayaan 2, this time the lander has about four engines and two of them will work eventually when the lander uh, process is going to be in. Thrusters will be switched off to ensure that the uh, velocity can be reduced. It's also important to know that when this landing process is be uh, has begun, scientists will also have to ensure that the thrusters are switched off at a particular time and because there's going to be a lot of lunar dust which could cloud the lander when it uh, starts the landing process. Also, when it's going to be at a point of about 150 uh, meters from the lunar surface, the lander is going to compare, is going to scan the uh, lunar topography and will compare the images compared with the onboard imagery which has been lo already loaded by the scientist on the system uh, compared to Chandrayaan 2 when we had selected the landing site based on the images which were captured by missions from different countries this time ISRO has earmarked the landing site based on the images which were captured by the Chandrayaan 2 orbiter which is, makes us more confident uh, we have selected a slightly larger landing site which is about four kilometers into 2.5 kilometer and the lander could land anywhere between this just minutes before the landing the lander is going to scan that lunar surface it's going to check uh, if there are any boulders or craters and will look for a uniform relatively uniform surface to eventually land it, it has four legs which are going to withstand the impact of the landing process so that high speed of about 1.6 kilometer per second would be gradually lowered down to almost zero, zero just before the landing process now this lander and the rover apart from achieving a successful soft landing on the moon are going to perform series of scientific experiments on the moon to understand the lunar exosphere which is the weak atmosphere of the moon as well as the regolith which we basically refer to the lunar soil we really want to understand the uh, what what are the minerals uh, what is the composition of the lunar atmosphere which is going to provide answers to how the uh, moon has evolved over the years uh, there is no air on the moon and that is why it has preserved the history and scientists uh, hope that it could provide answers to the origin of the universe so it is going to be a big mission and uh, what another remarkable achievement of ISRO is that uh, the entire mission has been executed with a very limited budget compared to what other countries do and the scientists have led this hard work for years which is going to uh, which we hope will fructify today in the evening when the power descent phase and India becomes only the fourth country in the world to achieve this feat but what is most remarkable is that India is going to land on the south pole of the moon and will be the first country to achieve that feat uh, stay tuned to CNN News 18 we are currently at the the ISRO telemetry tracking and command network which is the place where the control room has been set up it is where the place it is the place where scientists are going to maintain communication with the lander module so the lander module will only communicate with the Indian deep space network uh, which is a, a network of dish antennas operated by ISRO as well as the other communication
communication facilities operated by NASA and uh, European Space Agency, which are also helping. So we really have come far from the space race of the 1960s. It's not just about who lands on the moon first, but what we do once we land there. And it's a concerted effort, and we are getting coordination from other space agencies across the world. Stay tuned to CNN News 18 as you bring all the important updates from the ISRO Center in Bengaluru.